God. Trying to run homes, have homes and businesses without God. It just won't work. It just won't work. Your home won't be what it ought to be until the Lord's there. Your job won't be what it ought to be until the Lord's in your heart. And the Lord knows that, and we know that, but somehow or another people keep running. Now, I wish that's been preached on so many times down through the years that God has used to draw people to Him that it's amazing. Here in this wicked day that you and I are living in, the Lord still stands with outstretched arms inviting sinners to come to Him. It's not old. It's not old-fashioned. It's not, it's not uh, outdated. God still invites sinners to come to Him. Look at Isaiah chapter 1 and verse number 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Here, God is making you an amazing offer. He's saying that even though you've got stains of sin on your life and a guilty conscience that's red like crimson, that He'll, he'll, he'll make you white like snow. I want to preach to you this morning on God's great invitation. God's great invitation. Suppose you got a letter in the mailbox, or better yet, suppose there came a knock at your door. It was the mailman, and he said, are you Mr. So-and-so? You Miss So-and-so? And you said, yes. And he said, I have a certified letter for you. Means that they have to deliver it directly to the person themselves. You said, for me, a certified letter? What, what's it about? He says, I, I don't know, but right up here in, in the corner of the address, it says, the White House in Washington, D.C. And you thought, my soul, one of them congressmen trying to get a vote, somebody trying, when you opened it up, and it was a special invitation from the President of the United States to you. And the invitation was for you to come to the White House and have lunch, and they were going to pick you up at your house, take you to Asheville, put you on an airplane, fly you to Charlotte, and then to Washington, D.C. At Washington, D.C., there would be a limousine waiting to pick you up, take you to the White House, escort you in, and have lunch with the President of the United States. Now, regardless of what anybody in here thinks of our president personally, you know that that would bring a certain amount of thrill to you. That would excite you. You thought, my soul, you'd show it to your friends, you'd take it to work and say, look at here what I've got. See this? This is an invitation to go eat with the president of the United States. Bet you ain't never got one of them before. And you would be proud of it and show it off. Well, I like to say to you folks today, you have a personal certified invitation from one greater than the President of the United States. God Almighty has sent you an invitation to come and be with Him and with Him and eat lunch with Him and sup with Him and He with you. And all you must do is respond to that. He's willing to save your soul from hell. He's willing to take you to heaven. He's willing to give you a new life. He's given invitation. And your responsibility is to respond to the invitation that He's given you. Let's look through the Bible this morning. And I will show you some times when the Lord gave the great invitation. Turning your Bibles to Luke chapter seven or 19, and I want to show you an old boy here in the Bible, in the book of Luke. Now, these illustrations will be in the New Testament, so hold your New Testament handy there, and look at Luke chapter number 19 and verse 1. This is a story in the Bible of a man by the name of Zacchaeus. And the Bible said that Zacchaeus was a little short guy, and he was wanting to see Jesus, who he was, and found out he was coming that way. Look at Luke chapter 19, verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press 
That wasn't people in news pictures from the newspaper. Or the press in the Bible was a great big crowd of people. Because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass that way. Now stop right there. Now picture in your mind. Zacchaeus was a stingy, miserly publican. He was a rich man that had cheated people to pad his own pocketbook. And this old boy's getting rich, man. He's raking it in. And he was doing cheating and making, taking advantage of poor people. All right? But something in his heart wanted to see Jesus. Something in his heart had a desire. He had heard about Jesus of Nazareth. He had heard about this man doing all these great miracles. So he said, I want to see him. His problem was he's a little short fella. Now, all them Jews, a lot of them, is kind of short, so he must have been real short. And he's trying to peep over the crowd, trying to see him. And he looked around, and he had a little gumption. And so he saw a sycamore tree here. And he said, I'll just climb that on there. And got on the next limb and went on up and got over top of them people. And he said, well, there he is. And lo and behold, the Lord Jesus Christ came right through that crowd. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I don't know how many people there were there. I don't know how many people were in that multitude. But Zacchaeus watched him. He thought, man, he's coming off close to this tree. And he walked right under that tree. He didn't even think he saw him. And right when Jesus got to that tree, he stopped. And everybody looked, and old Zacchaeus is looking down at him. And about that time, the Son of God lifted up his head and looked up there. And Zacchaeus said, uh-oh. And boy, all those people standing around there, everybody looking up at him. And notice what Jesus said in verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and what? Come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And the Bible said, and he made haste and came down. What? Received him. Received him. The Bible said, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. You know how a man becomes a son of God? He receives Jesus Christ into his heart. Brother, the Bible said, as many as received him. You either reject him or you receive him. But the Lord made the great invitation. Come on down, Zacchaeus. I mean, before the price is right was ever heard of, the Lord said, Zacchaeus, come on down. And boy, he said, I've got something good for you. Zacchaeus come down that tree and skint the bark off that thing. And he said, yes, Lord, you're going to pay attention to me. And the Lord said, right. He said, you're going to have something to do with me, an old stingy, miserly, cheating, low-down publican. And the Lord said, come on down. I'm telling you this morning, the Lord had to tell him to come down. You know, some of you, some of you, if you ever get saved, you're going to have to come down. You're going to have to come down off your high horse. You're going to have to come down on that little perch you've climbed up on. You're going to have to come down off a little uh, nest in that tree that you've made for yourself. You know what he was saying to Zacchaeus? He was not saying to Zacchaeus, just come down the tree. He's saying, come down from your pride. Come down from your riches. Come down from your self-righteousness. Come down from your, your, uh, your estate. Come down from your position. Hit the dust, Zacchaeus. If you want to get saved, if you want to go to heaven, come down off your high horse and get right with God. I'm saying to everybody in MacDowell County, there's some people in MacDowell County that will never go to heaven until they come down. Do you know there's people in MacDowell County that are living on a high horse and brothers saying, I'm this and I'm that. They wouldn't be caught dead in this place. They wouldn't let nobody see their car in the pot out there. They'll say, I don't want people thinking I'm going to an old uh, breast-beating, fundamental, Bible-thumping, uh, you know, red-in-the-face, spitting preacher. Uh, they don't even know how to say spitting. And brother, they, they say, I don't, want, I don't want nobody to think I'm that. No, let me tell you something, friend. If you ever step your foot inside the pearly gates of God's glory, you're going to have to come down. You know what God done when He made that ark? He made one door. And brother, everybody that got in went through the same door. I'm telling you this morning, whether you're rich or poor, black or white, big, little, important or not important, whether you're famous, whether you're well known or whether you're not known, there's only one door to come through. Everybody comes through the same door and some people's got to come down from their pride and hit their knees and come to God. You know what's the matter with some people? They're too proud. 
too stuck. Well, I don't want people to think I'm emotionally can't control myself and everything. Best thing for you to do is fall on your knees and bawl your eyes out and say, God have mercy on me, I sin. When that ark had that door, the snake that was laying on the grass had to, I don't know why they ever let snakes in there anyway, but I guess the Lord told them to. But that snake come in there and brother he had to climb up and wind around them rocks and around them trees and in the door. That high flying eagle that was soaring around up there in the sky, if he wanted to escape the wrath of the flood, had to come way down and come in the same door the snake did. I'm telling you this morning, I don't have a door up here for these goody-goody people and another door down here for old sorry sinners, uh, drunks and prostitutes and drug addicts. God has one door. You come through the same door a drunk comes through. You say, you come through the same door an alcoholic comes through. You come through the same door a pimp comes through. You come through the same door a crooked judge comes through. There's just one way to the pearly gate. is the old crossroad or the way called straight. As the old song said, and there's a lot of people that won't come to Jesus because they're too proud. They're up there on that little perch that they've invented and they won't come down to come to Him. I remember the night I got saved. I got sympathy for you this morning because I stood where you sit this morning. I sit where you sit and I stood where you'll be standing. And I remember the night I stood there at Nebo Baptist Church, 18 years old, when you're a teenager, you won't you don't want nobody to think that you you know, you want people to think you got it under control. The last thing an eighteen year old boy wanted was to see his friends let his friends see him cry. I was standing there that night beside my girlfriend, which is now my wife. She's still my girlfriend, but she's my wife too. And I sit there beside stood there beside her. And that night, you've heard me tell it over and over and over, but I'm telling it again because yesterday when I went down to the camp meeting, I was a little bit early and I pulled up in the parking lot of Nebo Baptist Church and just parked for a minute. And I sat there and began to reminisce a little bit. And I thought, I looked in that building and I said, something happened to me in that building right there that changed my whole life. Something happened to me in that church right there that's made me... I've never been the same since that night I walked in there, April the 19th, 1972. I've never been the same. Man, I started thinking about that. I remember that night I was standing there. I remember that night as, the, as a bunch of young people from Latchin State University were up singing. I remember my heart began to pound. Boy, people started going to the altar. My, I had hair, my hair was way down here on my shoulder. Back then, people was trying to be hippies, and I had old American flag sewed on my blue, blue jeans at the bottom. Everybody wore bell bottoms, you know. It looked like some kind of Peter, Paul, and Mary or somebody. I stood there, and I had on a little old knit shirt. And I thought, oh, oh, God. I don't want people to see me up there on my... I don't want nobody to see me crying. And boy, there's a girl turned around and looked at me and she said, Danny, why don't you get saved? And I said, it's not my time yet. And I thought, you know what was going through my mind? I don't want my friends. There's a bunch of people I went to school with. And I said, I don't want my friends to see me up there on my knees crying, bawling like a baby. And I was too stubborn. I was too proud. I was too high. And boy, God began to speak to me and said, Hey, buddy, hey, who's going to be the fool in the end? Who's going to be the fool in the end? And I found out I was too proud to get down there and get saved. And that night, boy, the next thing I knowed, I began to take stock. And I know how Zacchaeus felt when he slid down out of that tree. He said, All right, Lord, here I am. Now, there's got to come a time in your life when you come down come to Jesus. That's all there are to it. He had a hopeless condition, but then he got right. He got it straightened out. Turn to Matthew chapter 11. Let's look at these great verses on this great invitation. God's great invitation is for you to come to Him. God's great invitation is for you to be saved. God's great invitation is for you to go to heaven. The hell is refused. He is 
invitation. You hear me? The only way you can go to hell is refuse His invitation. You're too ashamed to walk down this aisle and get down here on your face before God and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. You know what your problem is? You're too proud. You're too stubborn. You're too ashamed. Now, let me remind you, God has ways of breaking you down. God has ways of bringing you to His feet. God has ways of reaching out and grabbing your heart and getting a hold of you where it hurts. Look what He said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. The great invitation of the ages. Come unto Me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now the Lord is looking here upon the multitudes of people in that day, and He's standing there, and there's great big crowds of people around Him, and He stands up and holds out His arms and says, Whosoever will come unto me, labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Now, I believe there's people here in this church this morning that need need to come to Jesus. Inside your heart, you're just tore all to pieces. Your stomach's messed up. You can't sleep at night. You can't eat right. And you need to come to Jesus. You need to come to Jesus. He is the answer to all your problems. You say, well, Brother Danny, I've got a lot of problems in my life. And as soon as I get them straightened out, I'm going to come. No! You come to Jesus just like you are. Problem all! I talked to a man not long ago, and I said, you need to come to the Lord. And he said, well, i got to get some things straightened out first. That's about like a man laying sick in the bed and saying, I'm going to wait till I get better and then go to the doctor. Yeah. Ain't no use going to the doctor then. You'd get better by yourself. If you could straighten out your life, there would be no use to come to Jesus. But you can't. It'll keep getting worse and worse and worse. What I'm trying to say this morning is, I know there's people in this building that the Lord's saying, come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. And you've not responded. You've never really come to Him. He's giving you an invitation. I heard about a revival that was going on in a certain community and in this factory where people was getting saved everywhere. This man couldn't find peace. And he tried to pray and he couldn't. Have you ever known anybody like that? He tried to pray and he couldn't get right. And he tried to pray and he, he just couldn't. It just seemed like every time he'd pray, nothing would happen. And he thought, well, good night. I'm doing what the preacher said. I'm praying and everything. Why ain't it happening? I don't know about this thing. And he said he just couldn't believe. And his boss man wrote him a note and sent him a letter and said, meet me out here at a certain time at 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock, he went there. And there stood that fella. He said, oh, I see you believed my note and accepted my invitation. The guy said, yep. And he looked right back at him and he said, now that's what you're going to have to do with the Lord to get peace. You get me? You're going to have to believe he meant this invitation. You know what people's problem is? They're looking for a feeling. They pray a little prayer and say, well, I don't feel like I think I should feel. I told a guy one time, I said, well, you saved? And he said, well, I don't feel like it. And I said, well, what kind of feeling are you looking for? And he said, that certain feeling. And I said, do you know what it feels like? And he said, no. I said, have you ever felt it before? And he said, no. I said, well, how do you know you ain't got it? You, <laughs> there's people all over the country that are looking for a feeling. They don't know what the feeling is, what it feels like. They wouldn't know if they had it or not. Hey, you're not saved by a feeling you get. You're not saved. You are saved. There's got to come a time in your life when you believe God sent you an invitation and you accept it by faith, brother, by faith. You'll drive yourself crazy hunting some kind of feeling. It's by faith. By grace through faith. You get the faith. You get the facts. You accept it. And it won't be long that you'll get a feeling. But problem is, you're wanting a feeling before you accept the invitation. It don't work like that. God's order is fact, faith, feeling. You know what most people want? Feeling, faith, and then facts. People won't come to Jesus for two reasons. First of all, they won't come because of ignorance. If it was raining outside... And all of a sudden... It just started pouring the rain, and I was standing around the corner. They may have a big tent set up just around the corner, and all I'd have to do is go around the corner and get in it. 
But if I'm ignorant of that tent being there and what it can do for me, I'll stay right there and get soaked. Now, the reason a lot of people won't come to Jesus, they are ignorant of what He can do for them. Second reason is because they don't realize that they need Him. Did you know one of the hardest things about my job is convince people they need the Lord? Have you ever tried to walk up to a 20th century American that's got two automobiles and an air-conditioned home and a buck stove and a carport and central air, you know, and, and got money in the bank, four vacations a year, and try to convince him he needs something? we got our job cut out for us, you know what? I tell you something, brother, whether you got a million dollars in the bank or a hundred million, you need the Lord, whether you want to admit it or not. In 1829, George Wilson, a man from Pennsylvania, murdered somebody and they sentenced him, the high court sentenced him to be hanged. Back in those days when hanging was capital punishment and they said if a man murdered somebody, he'll be hanged. But something happened and Somehow or another, some evidence came up the other way or something. Anyway, before his hanging, President Jackson issued George Wilson a pardon. And they took that thing, and somebody took it on a horse or whatever, how they got it there, and they came with the pardon and went to the prison and presented it to him and said, Here, this thing is signed by the President of the United States, Mr. Wilson, you are now free. Accept your pardon. And you know what? He refused it. Some of you may have read about it in the history books where it was the first time ever on record that a prisoner had refused a pardon. And they said, well, they said, well, you've got to take it. This is a pardon from President of the United States. And he said, I don't want it. I don't take it. I, don't, I refuse the pardon. They said, why, this is unheard of. Are you crazy, man? Are you out of your mind? The president is going to set you free, man. All you got to do is sign this, accept it, and walk out your free man. He said, no, I don't accept it. Well, they said, well, this has never happened before. What are we going to do? And they took it to court, and they took it to the judge. And, it, and you know what? It went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that a pardon is no good unless it's accepted by the one it's offered to. And he stayed there. I tell you what this morning, friend, every one of you is in the devil's prison. Every one of us has been enslaved by sin. He that committeth sin is the servant of sin. We're in the devil's prison. Jesus Christ walked up Calvary, let His blood shed wrote out our pardon. He's offering it to you today. But it'll not do you any good if you won't accept it. And what will cause a man to go to hell is sit there, and I'm offering you pardon, say, here's your pardon, you want out? And he says, no, I don't want it. People say, well, are you crazy? Do you want to go to the electric chair? Do you want to be hanged? I won't accept my pardon. That's all we can say. You have to go. You must accept the pardon. Now, I know the Lord's been dealing with somebody in here for a long time. And the Lord gave me this message to preach to you. It's very simple. It's very plain. He has written you out a pardon in the Word of God. That pardon says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That pardon says, Trust the Lord with all thine heart. You put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Accept what He's done for you on the cross. And you are totally free from your sin." Or else you can reject it. And you make up your mind which. Let's bow our head. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Please, quiet. No can. This morning we're going to sing a song. The old song, Just As I Am. I come. You know what the Lord says? Come.
come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Now, it's just this simple. Are you going to come or not? He invites you to come. Are you going to or not? You're either going to say yes or no. You're going to say, yes, I'll do it, Lord. I'll accept you. It's not going to be easy for me, but I'm going to walk down that aisle and I'm going to trust you with all my heart. Or else you're going to say no and turn your back on him again. He couldn't walk down there in front of all these people. He sure walked up a hill with a cross on his back in front of a lot of people for you. It's God dealing with your heart. We're going to pray. Christians pray. There's people in here that need to come to Jesus right now. Dear Lord, Lord, I can't make that step for that man, that woman, that boy or girl. I can't do it. Lord, you've invited them to come. And I've tried to present to them best I could your invitation. Lord, if there if there's any confusion about it in their mind whatsoever, God help them to get it settled right now. And come to Calvary. Help them to come right now. Some of them have been waiting, waiting and waiting, and now's their change to come to Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and sing. We've done got some that's come this morning. If God's speaking to your heart, if you need to come on the first verse of this song, you come right now. Come on right now. Just as I am with Amen. Come on right now. Come on. Come on. Hey, he gives you an invitation to come this morning, friend. For me. Come on right now, will you? And that thou be as simple as ABC. Come to Jesus. Come to Him this morning. You've been waiting a long time. Now's the time to come. Won't you come right now? Come on to Him. Amen. Come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. Don't say no. Don't say no. some people. we got some more coming. Amen. Some more is coming. Some of you ladies come over here and pray. Make sure somebody's got, everybody's got somebody to pray with them. Show them exactly what they need to do to accept. It's just like, it's just like me reaching these paper out saying, here, you want it? You accept it. The Lord Jesus is offering salvation. It is a free gift. You can be saved. One of these days, the world's going to be gone. One of these days, we're going to be standing in eternity. One of these days, it's all going to be over. I'm so glad that I made that step that night and trusted Him as my Savior. If you've never done it, if you've never done it, while we sing this next verse, why don't you come right now, will you? Come on right now, while we sing. May the Holy Spirit of God touch your heart. May the Holy Ghost be with you this morning. Convict you of your sins. Bring you to Jesus right now. Come on right now while we pray. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit of God deal with your heart. Amen. Come on, just get out of your seat. Come on, just stay in your seat right now. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll sing another. We'll sing another verse. Make sure. Make sure you get it right. Sing it, everybody. Just as I. Thank God the door is still open. Thank God the invitation is still here. And that thou be.
Would you bow your head just a moment? Would you bow your head? No talking. No talking, young people. You respect the house of God and what they're doing here this morning. These people making decisions that's going to infect their eternal destiny. Don't you take it lightly. Don't you take it flippantly. It's serious business. too late. We'll wait just a few seconds and we're going to pray. Anybody else? Anybody else need to come? You can't now. Anybody else need to come right now? Dear Lord, these that are on the altar this morning, give them that that they need. God, please bless them. Let them know they've been forgiven. Let them know their prayer's been heard. Let them know, Lord, that you've saved them or touched them, whatever the need was. I pray the power of God will come on every one of them. Let them know something's different when they walk out these doors. Lord, may they have a new power, a new sense of direction, a new victory over sin that they didn't have before. Having to live for you every day. Bless these that come, we ask. And these that didn't come, Lord, they're still holding back. Oh, you've given them a good invitation, but they've never accepted it. Please, Lord, speak to them. Speak to them, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. And for His sake and for His glory. Amen.